Well, good Monday morning to you folks. Hopefully you had a good night's rest and uh, hopefully you had a great weekend. I'm going to read to you from Then Sings My Soul again today. You know, this is the week of Christmas. And so following into the weekend on the 24th will be Christmas Eve and Sunday will be Christmas. So we're continuing with the Christmas theme. It came upon a midnight clear, 1849. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That is Luke 2, 13 and 14. Edmund Hamilton Sears is the author of two Christmas carols that are mirror images of each other, written 15 years apart. He was born in Sandsfield, Massachusetts on April 6, 1819, and attended Union College in Sheridan, and then Harvard Divinity School. He was ordained in the Unitarian ministry and chose to devote himself to um, and devote himself to small towns in Massachusetts where he had time to study, think, and write. At 24, he wrote Calm on the Listening Ear, a Christmas carol based on the song of the angels in Luke 2. It proved very similar to the more famous carol he would later write, having the same meter and, and theme, and it can be sung to the same tune. Calm on the listening ear come heaven's melodious strains, where wild Judea stretches far her cyber mantled plains. Celestial choirs from courts above shed sacred glories there, and angels with their sparkling lyres make music in the air. Fifteen years later, he wrote its more famous twin, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. It's an unusual carol in that there is no mention of Christ, or the newborn babe, or the Savior's mission. Sears, after all, was Unitarian. The author's only focus, the angelic request for peace on earth. Notice again the date of the hymn. It was written as the clouds of civil strife were darkening. The United States setting the, setting the stage for the war between the states. We can grasp that concern that drove Edmund to write this hymn by reading a stanza, now usually omitted from most hymnals. Yet with the woes of sin and strife the world hath suffered long. Beneath the angel strain have ruled 2,000 years of wrong. <laughs> A man and man and ire and war within his heart, the, the last song which they bring. Oh, hush the noisy man of strife and hear the angels sing. Edmund Sears became well-known because of his hymns and his books. He was awarded the Doctrine of Divinity degree in 1871 and took a preaching tour of England where he was met by large congregations. He died in Weston, Massachusetts on January 16, 1876. And my only hope for that man was that if he uh, preached through England, that he somehow became uh, a part of the Christian church and was able to preach about uh, the birth of Christ, not just the midnight clear on which it came. Unitarian or not, uh, my prayer is that he was able uh, to bring the actual word of God and the story of Christ, the baby in the manger. But we're going to sing his story, his song that he wrote today. We'll give this a shot. So. It came upon the midnight clear That glorious song of old From angels bending near the earth To touch 
touch their hearts of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men from hands all gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled, and still their heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world. Above its sad and lowly plains they bend on hovering wing and ever o'er its babble sounds the blessed angels sing for lo the days are hastening on by prophets words unfold and when the ever-circling years comes round the age of gold, when peace shall offer all the earth its ancient splendors free, and the whole world give back the song which now the angels sing. Lord, we thank you um, so much for sending your son for us. And just this past weekend um, to uh, watch the young people at the church to illustrate um, the manger scene, the nativity, and to hear the words of the song that was sung, that it was his sin, uh, his sinlessness, and our sin that drove him to that cross. It was our sin that nailed him there. Even at Christmas time, if it wasn't for the birth, there could be no death. If it was not for the death, there would be no resurrection. If it was not for the resurrection, there would be no hope for us. And for that, we're thankful. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, folks. See you Tuesday.